Welcome to World Energy Television. I'm Richard Loomis, CEO of World Energy. You don't have to go far today to see high-priced energy. Oil is topping $130 a barrel. The price at the pump is over $4. Our heating bills have gone higher and higher. We're right around the corner from summer, and air conditioning will be equally as expensive. It seems our economy is changing. We're going to have to deal with high-priced energy. To discuss this and go across the board, we're visiting today with Matt Simmons, chairman of Simmons & Company and author of Twilight in the Desert. Matt, thank you very much for joining us. Well, oh, very welcome. But I would disagree with prices being high. They're still, unfortunately, cheap. Where do you think prices should be based on supply and demand? Right now, we have the, the, pr the prices are very high by any historical measure, but the problem is, historically, they were always so unbelievably cheap that they were effectively free. We didn't think about it. So, yeah, $4 gasoline is a huge surprise to Americans, but basically, uh, at $3.20, because it's an easy round number, we had just crossed 20 cents a cup. So I would guess today, if you did the math, it's probably about 24 cents a cup. And a cup of gasoline will take a 2,000 pound car and six pretty bulky people with a lot of luggage in the trunk and air conditioning and, um, uh, uh, on uh, almost two miles. Try some time to go out and negotiate with a guy on a dirty, with a donkey and an old wagon and say, excuse me, I got my five friends here and a bunch of luggage. We you take us a couple of miles for 25 cents and he's gonna spit at you. Uh, but here in the United States, we're kind of spread out. So we need to travel quite a distance. Yeah. Where do you think this price is going to land? I think we could basically probably go up 12 or $15 a gallon. And basically, people would complain a lot about it. It would be a favorite thing to complain about. But basically, it's still, I think, by gallon, cheaper than Bud Light. Not only is it cheaper than Bud Light, but just about every other liquid available to it. Well, what is Bud Light by the gallon? Well, I know a, a six-pack of Bud Light is, I think, four and a half dollars, five dollars. Well, is a six-pack a gallon? No. I don't think so. No, not even close. Nothing close. So we just got so spoiled mm -hmm. that basically uh, uh, we really don't have any reference point as to what fairness is, but I think it's still too cheap. And I think it's a tragedy that we had so little input about the real sustainable cost that it's caught everybody flat-footed. Well, and how much refining capacity do we have in the United States? Capacity, uh, nameplate capacity, we have about 16 plus million barrels a day. Now, that's a, that's a theoretical nameplate uh, because we've now painfully learned that if we try to run it even close to 100%, the refineries primarily blow up. <laughs> Very good point. We are finding that it's very hard to get the refineries up over e up to even 90%. If we have that level of refining capacity and we can provide the fuel uh, to the United States. But we can't. We cannot we, provide that much. No, we use basically 20 to 21 million barrels a day. In and gasoline? So, no, in, in, total, in total petroleum. I see. So refinery puts out a whole bunch of slates of things. Mm -hmm. So if we're using, say, 21, and at 100%, we can only produce 16. We have to import a lot, which we do. And those are the refined product imports. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that I saw in the hearings last week. Hearings is a funny topic. The grillings. The grillings, yes. Yeah, yeah. That's actually the title of my next editorial. Yeah, you better right. get to grilling. Yeah. Um, hearings is sort of a nice exchange. And all, I, what I heard was a bunch of grilling. Well, and it was grilling. You're yeah. right. But the comments were about how the price of gasoline is too high. Mm-hmm. Uh, comments by whom? Uh, comments by different senators. Yeah. Uh, one of the comments. But did any? Did, excuse me for interrupting. I'm just because I, I didn't hear it. Yeah. Uh, I was, did any of the oil company executives politely explain as I did that no, they're actually cheap? The explanation from the executives was that they're making between four and six cents per gallon um, at the pump, and mm -hmm. was that a, re a reasonable rate of return uh, for the sale of gasoline or not? Uh, but yeah. one of the things that I found interesting is demand has continued to rise, mm -hmm. even at a $4 price of gasoline. Mm -hmm. The demand keeps going up. I hear in the media the complaints about mm -hmm. the high prices, mm -hmm. and we see our Congress telling the CEOs the prices are too high. Yeah. If you back up, I guess, about a year when they were having the idea of breaking up the big oil companies mm -hmm. because the prices were too high, mm -hmm. the questions were almost identical. 
Mm -hmm. When you back up to 2005 on price gouging, mm -hmm. it was almost identical. Let's see, was that that was gouging though at 55, wasn't it? Yeah, it was gouging at 55 dollars. Yeah. So that was minor gouging. <laughs> <laughs> well, the price of gasoline after the hurricanes yeah. had jumped up to I think four dollars, no, uh, three dollars no, and fifty-five cents. Oh, I don't think I think over three. It was over three. That was um, gouging. That was gouging. Yeah. And here we are again, the, the same answers yeah. coming into Congress yeah. about the same thing. But we haven't seen demand really come off. Yeah, it's because it's too cheap. How, when, when do you see that line starting to equate to where the consumer actually does start to complain about the pricing? Oh, the consumer is complaining right now. But the, it's, the, it's, it's very different of a consumer complaining mm -hmm. and a consumer making a radical switch in their lifestyle. One of the things that you and I have talked about in the past is the concept of peak oil. Mm -hmm. And at what point do we start to see a decline on production? Uh, one of the CEOs, and I forget which one it was, commented on that they have no control over the supply of the oil. Mm -hmm. It's a world market, mm -hmm. and they buy the oil at world price. Mm -hmm. And the oil they produce is sold at world price. Mm -hmm. How much are we producing? In terms of crude oil or petroleum? Crude oil. Well, the best numbers we have is somewhere around 73 to 74 million barrels a day. But those are very spongy numbers. And they are assuming that the third party media estimates are correct of what Iran produces, and Saudi Arabia produces, and Kuwait produces, and the UAE produces, and Venezuela produce. Um, and I wouldn't basically bet any money at all that there's any precision to those numbers. So I think that it's a notional amount, just like it's a notional amount of what their spare capacity is. Well, and spare capacity, I think, is an interesting figure, uh, because one of the things that it has been discussed is in order to bring the price down, you need to bring supply up. Yeah. Is that possible? No. Today, how many of the countries that export to the United States are actually showing production decreases? It, that it's, it's actually easier to turn around the other way because it's a short list. Mm -hmm. Say, how many of our key importers of oil in the United States are actually still growing their production? Angola, uh, Azerbaijan, I think maybe Brazzaville. Brazzaville. <laughs> I think produces 80,000 barrels a day. Well, on the EIA's website, mm -hmm. it pointed out that 50% of our crude supply comes from the Western Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. Now, of the supply in the Western Hemisphere, which countries are experiencing difficulties? Uh, Canada. Canada has had big declines in their conventional crude, and they're having some god-awful operational problems in their heavy oil. Uh, the United States. Uh, it was only, it was really only the, the 1970, which should, in 1970, I was already in Houston, when before we had Alaska, we peaked at over 10 million barrels a day, and if you take Alaska out and deep water out, that number's down to three. Uh, then Mexico. Mexico peaked in May of 2005, when the Cantorell field had had a huge increase because they did the Schuess nitrate injection. Mm -hmm. And now Cantorell, Cantorell peaked at 2.2 million barrels a day when Mexico was at 385. And Cantorell now is down close to a million barrels a day. Venezuela, at their peak, produced over 6 million barrels a day. They claim they produce 2.5 or 3, but most people think it's under 2, mm -hmm. around 2. Mm -hmm. uh, Colombia you know, peaked at about, I think, eight or 900,000 barrels a day, and it now stays about 550. Um, Argentina peaked years ago, and it's down. Um, Brazil has this unbelievable potential in the Santos Basin, which is why in the last two months they have ordered some staggering number of potential deep water rigs, like 70 deep water rigs, but that won't be oil realistically that will be coming to the market until maybe 2020, 2025. But the answer is, in broad terms, nobody's growing. So there really isn't some place that we can go no. to get more crude. No. Now, if Cuba finds a lot of crude, now that they're going to start thumbing their nose at Florida and drilling off the eastern shore, maybe in four or five years we can get some oil from Cuba. <laughs> We'd have to change the laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll change the laws if we have a shortage.